I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swarzyk, and today, some engineering types from the engineering department. I have Ryan Damon and Nick Erickson. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Hello. You bet. Pleasure awesome. to be here. So we're wrapping up the hunting seasons generally as, as a country, and one thing we, we didn't really address earlier in the season, say, you know, August, September time frame before things really kicked off, was straight walled cartridges that's something that you know for a huge portion of the united states those cartridges are increasingly more in demand and more popular with an increasing amount of firearms available in some of these straight wall cartridges and those cartridges span from stuff that was released in 1873 like the 4440 or stuff that was released last year or two years ago like the 400 legend for example um, but they're becoming more popular because of certain states and their legality. So I'd like to talk about straight wall cartridges, maybe what we think are some of the best straight wall cartridges, what we would choose, and kind of give some background on why they are exploding in popularity uh, in the the last, I don't know, 10, 12 years or so. But before we do that, I want to establish why we really haven't addressed that on the podcast. And for the most part, it's kind of, it's not shameful, but we live in an echo chamber. We're here on the prairie, out on the Great Plains, and Seth it growing up on the prairie, you're shooting a high-powered rifle during rifle deer season. That's just how it was. And at the time, I didn't really know that there were restrictions elsewhere. I thought everybody got to do that, um, and I didn't really grasp that. There were people using straight wall cartridges locally, but that was more of a nostalgic thing. They had an old you know, trap door, 4570 or something. And it was just kind of a cool factor, but there was no legal reason to use a straight wall cartridge. So that's how I grew up. I mean, Nick, I know you're kind of probably similar to that. Yeah. Northwest Missouri. So we had rifle cartridges. Everybody had the 25-06, 30 six stuff for deer season. Uh, Iowa was about 15, 20 minutes away and they always used shotguns with slugs. So they, they didn't really have any high power rifle up there at all um we just kind of tried to stay away from iowa so <laughs> <laughs> um, fair enough yeah. so you grew up yeah same thing like i'm sure well you know if anybody hasn't listened to the revolver episode revolver episode excuse me that you were on um your background in that neck of the woods but you got to work at the gun shop and we're always around guns so there was probably some straight wall stuff going on just oh yeah out of- i mean there's always straight wall stuff in in you know, it correlates to handgun stuff too, 357s, 44s, um, and Marlin's always had a lever action in one of those, and they're they're fun they're to hunt with and play with, but generally if you were going deer hunting, you used, you know, 25-06, mm-hmm. 280, 30-06, something along those lines. So. Yeah, well, and that kind of falls in line with, you know, there's kind of a metal- mentality of, you know, if you're going to go do something, you sh- could do your best effort to stack the odds in your favor for success and you know shooting a 18 inch carbine in 44 mag or a 25-06 doing mock jesus with a 26 inch barrel i mean you know your hit probability and your bail ability to misrange something let's say um you just get better performance so shifting gears a little bit ryan you're from one of the more iconic white tail states i mean 200 inch deers behind every tree, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in beautiful Ohio. And that is, that does have, or did have some more of those restrictive le- uh, laws on, on shotguns and muzzleloader only. Yeah. So being from Ohio growing up, everybody I knew hunted with 20 gauge. Mm-hmm. It was like pretty much your option. If you want to be a serious gun hunter, you got a rifled barrel on 20 gauge and you're shooting slugs. That... Fast forward, when I moved out here, that was pretty much the year. It was actually before the, the laws changed in Ohio to use straight wall cartridges. That was 2013. So I moved out here before that. So it's basically been since I've been out here that all those laws have changed. Now I still have relationships with people back there, and they're, I'd say, split. Some people are still using those shotguns because that's what they know, and that's what they're that's comfortable what they with. That's what they have. But a lot of, I'd say the younger crowd, people more my age, have changed. They're shooting 
350 Legends and AR or 450 Bushmasters mm-hmm. because it it they realize it's a better option sure. just ballistically and recoil and bullet technology is advanced. So I'd probably say accuracy would yeah. go along with that. Accuracy and yep. consistency. Yep. yep. Yeah, with the shotgun, you got a lot, a lot of pieces, parts in there to help kind of fights the battle against consistency there. I mean, you got, for people that would think, oh, it's a rifled shotgun, it should shoot like a centerfire brass mm-hmm. cartridge. It, there's a lot more there, though. So Yeah, yeah. I've the, seen crossbows shoot better groups at 100 yards than some rifled shotguns. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, and coming back to the rifled shotgun, it's crazy that some manufacturer slugs shoot really, really good, and some that are similar weight, everything's similar, won't shoot four inches out of that gun. And then you go back to, you know, whatever manufacturer A, and it, it drives tax. Yeah. It, it's crazy how much different performance you get from manufacturer on shotgun slugs. Yeah. yeah. And then on the muzzle loader side, one of the things that that every time I hunt with a with the regular inline muzzle loader and loose powder and stuff, Every time I squeeze the trigger, I'm like, man, I hope this thing doesn't hang fire or have, you know, soft ignition or something. And that's, that ignition problem has gotten a lot better over the last 20 years with inline muzzle loaders, but it's still a thing. And in those states where one, they had a dedicated muzzle loader season, even states like Nebraska, our muzzle loader season is in December. So you're there's, it's going to be certainly below freezing in most cases, sometimes below zero and the ignition consistency in the muzzle loader world. That's always been, you know, a concern of mine. Uh, I've never experienced anything negative while hunting, uh, but I have at the range, and it's not super confidence inspiring. And you, know, you clean your breech plug out, and make sure you're using the hottest primer that money can buy if you can find them. And um, but that's still a concern. And you, by switching to some of this straight wall stuff, you mitigate all of those concerns. You get consistency, you get accuracy, you get great ignition, good uh, ballistic performance, both with bullet drop and trajectory, and uh, internal ballistics building up that pressure so there's a lot of reasons to use it uh, and before we go further i don't know this I, I haven't studied it um i have my speculation i'd like to hear your speculation on why do you think so many of those states in the traditional midwest had those slug or muzzle loader zones only where you couldn't use something uh, you know that we're used to using like a 6.5 Creedmoor, let's say i mean i think the baseline there is i think it's how far is that bullet traveling, right, to be safe? Mm-hmm. And those are more densely populated areas. I think of Ohio, you got, most guys are hunting small parcels. I mean, you're a six-acre woodlot and a little bean field or something, and then, well, there's, you sit in that woodlot and you can see eight houses sure. on that section, and then you don't want a bullet traveling yeah. or risking traveling into any of those areas, but I think that's the... I don't know for sure because I wasn't involved. Mm-hmm. None of us were, but when all those states made those regulations early on, it had to be out of a safety measure just sure. because of population density and proximity to residents. Yep. That stands to reason. I mean, I would think, um, you know, we get, uh, again, in an echo chamber out here on the prairie where things are very far apart for the most part, especially, you know, in this, that ecotone area between, you know, I don't know, I'll say east of Casper, Wyoming, and then west of about where we're at right now, Grand Island, Nebraska, you've got that stretch of North Dakota, South Dakota, Eastern, uh, Eastern Montana, Eastern Wyoming, Eastern Colorado. It's got some rolling hills, some sand hill regions, and there is very few towns, very few people, and it just looks like it goes forever. But you go that distance to the east of where we're at, and it gets to be farm on top of farm on top of farm. And Obviously, farming is more lucrative than letting trees stand. So, um, the like you said, the woodlots tend to get a little smaller. The woodlots are generally super dense too, though. Yeah, you get dense, dense hardwoods, mm-hmm. and they're even if you wanted to shoot across that property, you, you really couldn't. Just the the hardwood stands are a lot more dense than out here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. What about population of hunters? Uh, you know, on that six acre lot, how many hunters are hunting that one spot? Is that I mean, you that, think that's a rate? You know. A oh, factor too. Yeah, that's huge too. I mean, Ohio is. I know they they talk about it on hunter density. I know Ohio is up there, probably top four or five in the country. You got way more people hunting per square mile mm-hmm. than definitely out here. I mean, it's 
Yeah. Probably well, 10, 10 X. Even those states that don't necessarily have the, the straight wall, or excuse me, don't have the muzzle loader or shotgun restrictions, say Wisconsin comes to mind. You have a state that's got a, a pretty healthy population, a huge deer density. I mean, really high deer numbers, that thick timber, and then the population of people that actually hunt. You have a perfect storm for, you know, you might want to think about using a cartridge that has a limited range simply mm-hmm. because high d- deer numbers, high people numbers, and then high hunter numbers too. Um, but that whole area and that yeah traditional upper Midwest area and, you know, into the South, which you can use, you know, normal bottleneck cartridges in the, most of the South, uh, the same thing happens though. You've got really thick timber, you're, the shot distances aren't going to be that great anyway, um, in most cases, but then you have high hunter density to go along with the high deer density and the high population. Right. Bore driver ELDX. Fast and easy to load. The polymer base seals the bore and engages the rifling while the post and pedals grip the bullet's boat tail. With its superior ballistic coefficients and reduced drag, the bore driver ELDX drives its 340 grain bullet to target with the energy and accuracy that turns shots into success. When you have one shot this muzzle loader season, make it count and use the best. Bore driver ELDX from Hornady. So that's kind of a look into what we would speculate why those laws were set that way. Well, when, like you mentioned, you came to Hornady in 2011 or 2012? Yeah, 2011 then yeah. intern. So I was out here during 2011. And Nick about the same time. No, I, I was here. I was actually in, here before that. I was January 2010. Whoa, Nick, you're knocking on 15 years of dedicated service. And yeah. You've only been fired like once or twice a year by Steve Hornady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Haven't been fired yet. So yeah. th- this year anyways. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Still early. <laughs> yeah. Been one, one week into 2024. Uh, uh, all jokes aside, uh, you guys were here as the dominoes started to fall in those Midwestern states that had those regulations. And you mentioned Ohio in 2013. And then Indiana was, I think, pretty quick to follow and maybe predated it somewhere in that early time frame where you have them adopting, hey, maybe we should look into some straight wall cartridge legality that allow these people, these hunters, to use center fire cartridges during these gun seasons. And there were several other states that followed after, and we'll talk some, uh, most of them, and we'll talk some of the legality in each state. What do you guys think predicated that shift from shotgun muzzleloader only to adopting some of these straight wall cartridges? Probably, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. I think hunter recruitment would be a big portion of that. And you got, if you want to get more people out hunting, more people buying licenses, more people involved in the sport, let them use some of the more modern cartridges and weapon systems, make it easier for them, more fun, more enjoyable. Sure. I think that's a big big uh, part of it there um yeah well in i mean we are in the the ar you know um we're a country yeah Yeah, modern sporting rifle um so everybody has one and so to make it available for a cartridge that is a, a super easy upper change and then you know you don't have to buy a special barrel and shoot different ammo and and go out to you know it just makes it easier yeah. switching over to an AR cartridge. Yeah, like a Bushmaster yeah. or a 350 Legend, something like yeah, that. Yeah, and the Bushmaster was already available then, mm-hmm. um, and it it was already established. It wasn't new. It, it was there. Um, and it's accurate. It works yeah. good. And recoil is not as bad. I, I don't know if you've spent much time around a 20-gauge slug, but if you're in not like interested. A, I have, H- and I yeah. don't like it. <laughs> An H and R slug gun or something like that. It just it, the recoil is terrible. It's not really fun to shoot. Mm-hmm. You know, if you got a special purpose Savage um, two twenty, yep. you know those were those are pleasant to shoot and they shot really good. But those are as much as a rifle. You know, you're seven hundred seven hundred fifty dollars into one of those. So a lot of guys weren't spending the money to do that, and you can get into an AR for four or five hundred dollars back back then. Mm-hmm. Um, in the Bushmaster and, you know, that made it easier and yeah. more pleasant to shoot and you could get, you know, younger audience into it. Yeah. And I think hunter recruitment is definitely a big one. It makes a lot of sense too, for the reasons you mentioned. I, I, again, I don't know this, but 
in a lot of those states where you have really high deer density, really high deer numbers, I mean, the, the state who manages those populations, they have an obligation to make sure that the herd numbers stay within a, one, a, a biological limit that the ground they have, the habitat they have can support. And then you have densely populated states that have a lot of motor vehicles. So, you, I mean, there is an op, a conservation effort really to make sure you're harvesting the correct number of animals so that you're keeping road incidents down. You're, you know, you're keeping a population in control where, you know, communicable diseases aren't rampant. Um, cause you know, you get a population that's out of control, things like that certainly do happen. So I'm hoping there was not just a, let's get the younger crowd in there to keep the hunting thing going, but there's something to be said about that too, but also you know, I mean, Nebraska, I think the last her number I heard was estimated to have like 200,000 deer or something like that, 220,000 deer at the Nebraska big game bank yeah. or, uh, meetings we went to. That was a few years ago mm -hmm. in comparison to other states that are triple that, you know, and, yeah, at least, yeah. And states that are smaller than Nebraska that have triple that population of deer. And again, those are estimated numbers, but, um, you do have an obligation to, to help control that. And what better way than to hunt them? You get one, it's just so enjoyable. It's cathartic. You get to share it with your kids or your parents or your grandparents. A lot of it's traditional handed down. And then you get to harvest something that you get to eat and enjoy. And, you know, that's kind of a win-win all the way around. And I think another point for adopting some of these straight wall cartridges, and at least I'm, I'm hoping this, is the efficacy of these cartridges, the, the accuracy potential. You know, I, you hate to call it a uh, wounding season uh, when you, people are going out with muzzle loaders that don't shoot well and you could do everything right, but you have no control where that bullet's going when you're using patched round balls, let's say. Um, so something like this where you enhance the accuracy potential, but you really don't enhance the range potential. You know, when you look at an inline muzzle loader, you've got, you know, honest 200, 250 yard performance with a regular bullet. Well, with a, you know, 450 Bushmaster, you've got about that. Uh, you're really not extending the range, but you right. are extending what you mentioned earlier, Nick, the consistency and the accuracy and in the good ignition. So uh, it seemed like a good trade-off for me in, in that aspect personally. Yeah. Well, and it, again, with the semi-auto platforms, you can limit your shots to five or 10 or seven or, or whatever, you know, the state allows it. And, a lot of guys were single shotting with H and R's or TCs and stuff like that. So it, it gives you that follow up shot, you know, yeah. it gives you a little bit more versatility, um, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got a couple rounds on tap. Should you need them, which is, yeah, that's important. It builds confidence that way. You know, Oh, I've got that second one where the first one, again, wounding season, you didn't get a good shot. Yeah. Hard to get on it again. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, let's look at some of the rules surrounding these states, you know, and when I was, I put this little sheet together with just some of the rules that we, we got off the, their DNR or their game and uh, parks uh, websites. When I was putting this together really quick, I just couldn't help but be like, oh my gosh, every time I write a state and then paste the rules and regulations in there, it's just like, oh, that's traditional giant buck state. The next traditional giant buck state, the next traditional giant buck state. I mean, you're looking at Iowa, Illinois, Ohio, or Illinois, excuse me, Ohio, uh, even in, you know, Indiana, it's just crazy how many giant deer come out of those states. Um, uh, but we talked about Ohio and looking at Ohio, it seems relatively simple from what I could find straight wall cartridges with projectiles that measure 357 up to half an inch in diameter. And that's, that's a pretty big swing. Uh, and the muzzle loaders, that was 38 caliber and larger, but that's, you know, that's pretty easy to get. And handgun cartridges um, that are straight walled, 357 or larger, out of a five inch barrel if you're shooting with a handgun. So um, Ohio really kind of opened it up because there's a ton of cartridges between 357 and half of an inch in diameter that have a straight wall. Yeah, relative to a lot of other states with similar rigs, I mean, Ohio's pretty lenient as far as that goes pretty i would say generic mm -hmm. doesn't limit you on case length and all that so yep 
Uh, <laughs> and it, another one I want to talk about is Indiana. Um, we talked earlier about kind of a domino or snowball effect. I feel like when Indiana passed their straight wall regulations, that was the snowball effect for all of these other states. And what what happened when Indiana passed their straight wall stuff, the 450 Bushmaster went from, oh yeah, that's a big AR thumper cartridge to Ruger Americans available for $400. Let's make thousands of them. And the 450 Bushmaster went from a cartridge that was lived in the AR world and was kind of popular. And then, you know, kind of, it didn't fall out of favor by any means, but it was a, a niche cartridge and went from that to today. I'm not sure you can buy a factory built AR in 450 Bushmaster. Maybe uh, Brenton comes to mind. Yeah, there's a, there's a few that still. But it's certainly not mainstream. Bushmaster no. doesn't make a 450 Bushmaster, yeah, which well, is ironic. Yeah. Uh, but it is almost primarily now, not exclusively, but nearly a bolt gun cartridge. And the 450 Bushmaster, when you look at our sales volume numbers in just boxes of ammo sold, 450 Bushmaster will be usually in our top five every year. Oh, yeah, I don't doubt that at all. And that's <clears throat> largely because of Indiana kicking off the cascade effect of like I said, those straight wall adoptions. So that was really cool to see, you know, the 450 Bushmaster, which Nick would have been right before you started at Hornady. You know, we had the, what was it? The 45 Professional? The 45 Professional is kind of what brought about the, the Bushmaster. So, um, and then, yeah, that was a Hornady develop and work on that from 06, 07 and introduced that thing. Gun builders making it 07, 08 timeframe. And then, yeah, from, 08 to like you said you started in 2010 it was a thing people liked it and then it went straight vertical after that so in regard to straight wall modern cartridges that one founded the feast it really did mm -hmm. well and it, it's funny that cartridge is is kind of a funny one anyways because when it first came around it was meant to be a tactical thing you know it was heavy stopping mm -hmm. and then some pig guys found it and it it's been a pig cartridge from the beginning and oh, it, yeah you know as monty DeBoer says it'll knock the squeal out of a pig and, <laughs> and, and it does it works really well for that as well so i mean it does a good job as a general all-around brush gun hunting gun deer mm -hmm. gun so hornady v-match ammunition loaded exclusively with hornady eld vt bullets the low drag design of the eld vt bullets provide high velocity retention and minimal wind deflection initial offerings include 22 arc 6 arc 6 millimeter creedmoor 6.5 grendel and 6.5 creedmoor elevate your varmint shooting experience shatter records and make your mark like never before with v-match ammunition from hornady Yep. So moving from, you know, Indiana, we talked about Ohio, uh, looking at Iowa, which is just, you know, right next door to our east. Um, they now allow uh, straight walled cartridges. They do have some criteria, although if you read the first sentence and then read the other sentences, it's a little convoluted, but uh, they offer straight wall uh, centerfire cartridges, uh, 357 to half an inch in diameter in cases that are 0.85 inches long up to 1.8 inches long. Although you can also still use a 444 Mar and 375 Winchester and a 4570. We have case lengths that exceed that, but they're just kind of grandfathered in. And Iowa, another one of those states, Nick, you mentioned at the beginning, you live just a stone's throw from them. Shotgun state only, you know, good deer density, good hunter participation, uh, good. Uh, quality deer management. They're getting good age class bucks out of there too. A good uh, doe harvest every year, keeping the populations in check. Now you open it up to using straight wall cartridges through, I believe it's their muzzleloader season. Is that how that yeah. works? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And there's, man, 4570, 450 Bushmaster. There's a lot of thump. You knock the squeal out of a deer <laughs> with cartridges <laughs> like that during muzzleloader season. Right. Uh, so Iowa, uh, glad that they adopted that. And again, we talked about it earlier, you're increasing accuracy, consistency, precision, but you're not really increasing effective range over a muzzleloader with these cartridges that we're talking about. We spent a lot of time talking about Bushmaster here just a moment ago. Nick, you mentioned it right at the beginning. 
357 mag, 44 mag. Uh, let's not forget about those guys. You, you're you limiting your range, in fact, compared to some right. slug guns and some uh, uh, some muzzle loaders by opting for, you know, say a six inch, 686, 357 mag or something, you know, 44 magnum, for example. Um, certainly out of a handgun, you're limiting yourself there. So uh, I think it was a good switch for them. Uh, and again, better all around. Now we get into Illinois, which is a little bit more nuanced. I don't know a ton about the uh, legality of hunting in Illinois. I've not had the opportunity to hunt there, although it's you know on my bucket list because, again, that place, great deer numbers, great deer management, big tracts of land on, in, in some areas where you can really let a deer reach an awesome age class. But it's not as simple there as it is, say, in Iowa or Ohio in regard to straight wall cartridges. So uh, does anybody know any more about the straight wall scene in Illinois? Well, I was looking into it a little bit yesterday. They actually publish. So apparently you can use single single shot rifles. This was just last year. Okay. Like this past hunting season was the first season you could hunt with bottleneck cartridges as long as you're in a single shot rifle. Okay. Interesting. But I mean, you could yeah. hunt with a 308 or the CVA Scouts. Okay. I mean, yeah. Anything basically. But Yeah. Affordable rifle, good cartridge. That's That's yeah. neat. They actually look like they put together some decent data here for... And this is from the Illinois from, DNR. Yeah, Illinois DNR website or whatever it's called, Parks yeah. and Wildlife. Um, they actually went through and compiled some data about uh, m- muzzle velocity, what bullet they use. I think they just pulled this off of manufacturer's websites. But, and then they'll give you uh, energy at the muzzle, effective range, roughly mm-hmm. max range, and then they'll, they'll give you actually a max range, basically where they think that bullet will hit the dirt. So... And that's helpful for hunters. I mean, yeah, looks like it opens up a lot of options there. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that that's great to see, you know, a uh, uh, game and parks division do that to, to, to keep everybody who's going to hunt in Illinois, keep them from any red tape. It says right here, I can use this and, and keep it easy. And it's nice to see them doing some due diligence in preparing the list. And it just shows their commitment to, you know, making right. sure everybody knows what's going on. Uh, so from Illinois, then you have uh, Michigan. Uh, Michigan, again, another state that just historically has awesome hunter numbers, just big population of, of dedicated hunters up there, some amazing hunting opportunities there, and uh, and now some uh, straight wall regulations for Michigan as well, um, which I don't know Michigan, very much about. But Michigan seems like it's separated northern Michigan yeah, Southern Michigan. That's a big state that has a lot more population density in the southern half of the sure. state. So it just makes sense yeah, they they pretty, split it up like that. Pretty barren and rugged up there in the northern yeah, parts of, of Michigan. Just, yep, just timber. Yep, I see here cartridges must be between one point one six and one point eight inches, something like that. Sounds right. And Michigan's limited firearm zones, formerly known as shotgun zones, deer hunters can use rifled rifles chambered for straight wall cartridges, thirty five caliber or larger. And I think that's across the board that they've, you know, set 35 as the, is the minimum Mm -hmm. in most, most most places. Um, And I, the 350 legend probably has a lot to do with that because it's, it's about the smallest straight wall you can get Mm -hmm. as far as performance and energy. So awesome. Well, there's, yeah, more to be said here, but uh, you know, looking at some other states, in that same geographical region that don't have straight wall rules. I mentioned Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, and then a lot of states in the South. Um, These straight wall cartridges, although they're not mandated to be used, they're getting widely popular in those states um, that are both densely populated, have high deer density numbers, and have generally really thick timber. Um, Yeah, Minnesota, Wisconsin, I could think of, you know, states in the South, Alabama, Arkansas, places like that that are you know in, in a similar uh not geographical region but again that really thick timber really good deer numbers something like a 350 legend or a 450 bushmaster or a 44 magnum gosh those are outstanding cartridges for those states as well and we're seeing again a, a big swing in almost the entire eastern half of the united states shooting these cartridges and there's a lot of merit to a lot of them so uh, I'd like to talk now, kind of shift gears a little bit to maybe our preferences because, you know, we're just talking. This is just our opinion. 
but what do you guys like to shoot for straight wall cartridges? You know, I personally, I have very little field use with straight wall cartridges, admittedly, but I do have some preferences that I think I'll like. Um, but I'm curious to see, you know, from you guys, Ryan, you've been to Ohio hunting, uh, limited success, yeah, didn't find a 200 yeah. incher, but, uh, what do you guys think for straight wall cartridges? What do you think maybe would be, you know, best as a contraband? controversial word but maybe optimal so yeah like you said i've been to ohio since these regulations have been put in place and i actually carried a 450 bushmaster that i borrowed from nick and they <laughs> <All right>. are <laughs> uh yeah i never shot anything but i was fully confident with that rifle's capabilities at the time but since then 350 legend has been introduced so if i'm hunting in a spot where the regulations make me stick to straight wall cartridges and where that's my best bet I'm probably going to pick a 350 Legend nowadays just okay. because, well, if I want to build a gun, say I build an AR for those situations, it's, I mean, it's a lighter recoil. It's got plenty of energy. It's got, it's plenty of fishing out to two, 250 yards. That's all you're going to be shooting it anyway. So I could have my girl shoot it. I could have you just younger, more recoil sensitive shooters mm -hmm. might not shy away from it as much. I mean, that's probably what I'd pick. And with the knowledge in bullets, we've strictly designed some of those, actually all those, all of our offerings in 350 Legend were specifically designed for 350 Legend. So they're made to live in that velocity regime. Yeah. You purpose so, built the jacket, the thickness, the interlock yep. location, all of the things that make bullets perform like they do. If you buy Hornady Factory 350 Legend ammo, right. it's, it's going to be purpose built to work uh, at the distances you'll be using it. Right. So that's, that, yeah, that stands for something. And the lower recoil makes a ton of sense. Well, and we've got that sub X offering for that one. Ooh. And so that, that makes that cartridge a lot. I mean, any sub cartridge is fun, but mm -hmm. that cartridge is fun in, in the sub X. Yeah. And yeah, for hunting sub hundred yards, that sub X bullet, uh, Nick, you've got more experience using that bullet on game animals, mainly of the swine variety. Uh, than almost anybody that, that I know. And that sub X is a thumper. Yeah. So. Carries the energy, you know, it's a, just a big, heavy it, bullet and, and transfers the energy. Yes. That's, that's every time I shoot it, it's like, you know, this is a joke. And then you shoot it into gel or you see the terminal performance. That thing absolutely wreaks havoc. It's crazy to, to have something below the speed of sound, very, very minimal recoil, and then hit like a sledgehammer when it gets there. Yeah. Um, again, I mean, a lot of the, before we, I think, before we did sub X, you'd find subsonic ammo, and it's just because, yeah, it's a bullet traveling less speed of sound, and you might kill something with it, and it might tumble and come apart, or maybe get some expansion, but we specifically designed these things to expand and yeah. expand well, so it's no, it's not by luck or chance that you're seeing those type of results, so I think yeah. another little pat on our back from <laughs> right. the, from the technical side, those bolts do a good job. Right? Yeah. And as the listener, you know, if you want to hunt with the subsonic line of ammo and using that sub X bullet, you'll have to check your individual state regulations. Some of them have energy requirements, yep. which um, are a little bit antiquated, uh, but nonetheless, you should want to obviously conform with the law. So uh, check your, your local listings there for, for subsonic use, but they do work and they do work really well. And that's a good point in the 350 legend. You talk about you're already bringing the recoil down compared to some of the bigger straight wall stuff. And now you put in the subsonic and you're just bringing it down that much further. I mean, you think of, think of if you're hunting and I can picture the specific scenario in Ohio where I can shoot 25 yards literally. And that's, that's all you're going to get. Perfect scenario for a sub X for mm -hmm. a subsonic ammo. Yep. I mean, you know, you're not going to have to worry about drop at 140 yards. It's hold on a deer and yep. you're good to go. Excellent. So you're 350 legend. Now, uh, Nick, what, if you had to pick one, a, three, a straight wall cartridge, or if you had to pick a few, what are some of your favorite straight wall cartridges? Well, I'm going to go old school and, and do, you know, old lever guns, 4570, uh, 405 Winchester. I'm a big fan of 405 Winchester. Okay. Um, now that, yeah, Teddy Roosevelt himself would be proud. Yeah. Um, you know, big medicine, of course, and it carries, it carries a thump, but, uh, you know, it, it it's cool. Yeah. There is a cool factor to some of those older one, just the cartridge itself. A lot of those are romanticized cartridges like the 405, 4570, but then the firearms that you, you can get chambered in those things. There's a lot of cool factor there. 
Oh, yeah. Um, you know, just the other day, we had the 405 out. Let's uh, take a pause here. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Nick did have his 405 Winchester out, and we were out doing some training with some precision rifle stuff. And at the end of the precision rifle stuff, Nick brings out the real precision rifle. Let's, let's talk about the rifle first. Uh, it is a Winchester 1885, 28-inch um, octagon barrel, chambered in 405, and with the peep side on the back. Um, so we did some calculations. We figured out what each uh, thread was worth on come-ups on the peep site, and we figured it would go out to 600 yards. So we... With that, Nick takes this gun. I'm going to jump in here. Nick takes this gun and gets in the prone with that metal, metal butt plate squarely into his collarbone and, and adjusts the peep for 600 yards and takes aim at a full-size Ipsic target. And I'm up in the spotter. Nick touches the first shot off, and I'm expecting it to come up way short or to go way over the berm and not see it or, you know, just something. So he touches it off. I pick up Trace very quickly, and the bullet's traveling painfully slow, <laughs> and it's got this huge arcing rainbow trajectory. And I forget where your first shot landed, but it was, I mean, inches off of the target. Like, the elevation was pretty well spot on of a full-size Ipsic target at 600 yards. Yeah, we had a little wind that day, and, and you know, a 300-grain flat, base bullet i it, we don't really know how much the wind was going to affect it so we had to between yes and many <laughs> yes uh, um so no it took it took what two two three shots to get on and then it and really then, didn't take yeah. much and i what i was blown away with was okay he missed nick you're right off the right edge is what i think it was two three shots later you made the correction you're hitting the target now at 600 yards through peep sides with a four or five winchester but what's crazy even including the misses you're still shooting I don't know, an 18 inch group through peep sites at 600 yards away with a 300 grain bullet. Yeah. That was just cool. Tangential to using it for hunting in areas that we're talking about, but adds to the cool factor. Yeah. So again, you know, just, just stuff like that. Uh, it, it makes it fun, mm -hmm. you know, when you get to relive a little bit of history and, and, uh, bragging rights, you can, you know, I can tell Whitey that I killed something at, however far with a 405 and he'll actually get excited you know yeah. you tell him you killed something with 308 and he just kind of cool. yeah yeah so yeah that is pretty cool and i figured you take the kind of traditional trend utilize your space your way with the modular hornady security square lock organizing system mount the square lock panels anywhere in your home or shop then attach the wide assortment of square lock accessories to securely store firearms tools, gear, or any other valuables in any possible configuration. Keep your reloading bench or gun room organized with the Square Lock Modular Organizing System from Hornady Security. Uh, I think an important note here to our listener, we're in the, the, the meat of ballistic development. I mean, we've got 7PRC, the ELDX, the ATIP. I mean, we've got all these awesome you know modern innovations into precision jason hornady vice president of the company if you said hey grab a rifle get some ammo we're going on a whitetail deer hunt he's probably gonna grab an 18 inch lever action 44 mag that's his favorite cartridge combination right there is a carbine lever action and 44 mag yeah he's a 44 mag guy yeah and he's taking it all over the world and shot stuff with it so uh, it's kind of cool that again, we're in the, the, probably the best time in the history of shooting right now, as far as precision goes and the VP of our company still loving the, the classic straight wall 44 Magnum and there's oh, yeah. nothing wrong with that. Living the lever gun life. Yep. Yep. And speaking of lever guns, um, you know, we talked about ARs for a lot of these States, uh, but in the straight wall world, the lever gun is, is huge. I mean, that was the in my opinion, kind of a similar like AR-15 before the AR-15. You've got a bunch of rounds on tap and man, you can cycle that lever pretty darn quick if you got one tuned up. Uh, so there's a lot of cartridges like the 44 mag and, and several others that we have a line of ammunition dedicated to for the lever gun. You know, when you look at 
Lever Evolution, it's obviously in the name. The 357 Magnum, which is legal in most of these states. The 44 Magnum and 3855. And I mean, there's there's several others that that are awesome contenders that are just a little bit more on the traditional side. Yeah. And then the 190 41 Mag 2. Oh, yeah. And Hen- Henry makes a lever gun for it now. So, yeah, a lot of cool options there in the lever gun world. Oh, yeah. Um, personally, I think if if I had to, you know, if I got the opportunity to hunt one of these awesome states and try to find one of their giant bucks, I think I'd still lean towards the 450 Bushmaster. I really would. And uh, I do have to say, we've made it roughly 40 minutes into this podcast. And I haven't said bush hamster once. Um, and if you, if the listener, if you haven't gone back and listened to our 450 Bushmaster podcast, we have uh, Mitch Middlestead. He's our director of engineering, um, your guys's boss. Uh, he was firsthand intimately involved with the development of what was the 45 professional and in, into the 450 Bushmaster. Um, you know, right now in his current duties as the director of engineering. Um, he doesn't get to tinker and play and do a lot of the design work that he enjoys doing. But at that time, cartridge development with, you know, the lifting of the AR ban in 04, he was all about it. 204 Ruger, uh, 450 Bushmaster, etc. cetera. Uh, so go back and listen to that podcast. In that podcast, uh, I shared a little anecdote of when I worked for engineering, I had to jump into an ammo print and make some changes to it. And so, you know, I get in the software, I check out the print, I, you know, put my initials to make my uh, change and I adjust the, the print drawing. And at some point, some engineer had fat fingered a change that he made and typed Bush hamster. And this, that was years ago. I mean, that change that the, the print, the date on that print change was like, I don't know, 2013 or something. So fast forward to 2019 or whatever. I check this printout and I'm making a change and I see the bush hamster. And I, I mean, I'm a 12 year old boy at heart. I laughed hysterically. And since that day, it has forever been the 450 bush hamster. So, uh, for me, if I get the opportunity to hunt some of these States and I'm going to use a straight wall cartridge one, I'll have to use the bush master simply because of the bush hamster t- story. And two, I really like the versatility of AR-15, bolt gun. You can get affordable bolt guns. I mean, you can get some really economical rifles that are going to shoot really, really well. You could do the AR thing, which is cool. Uh, and then I like the versatility of the bullet and the size of the bullet. I mean, you can, it's a big bullet going pretty quick. I mean, you've got a 250 grain bullet doing 2,200. Yeah. Um, you know, that's going to be big medicine for for a, a big whitetail or, or pigs or whatever I may be doing. And then uh, one of the reasons I also sl- would prefer that cartridge is the availability of 45 caliber friendly suppressors. You know what? That 10 years ago, you were looking at something the size of this coffee mug. Now, you know, between all the brands, you've got the Silencer Co. Uh, uh, Hybrid 46, you've got the Silencer Shop, Banish 46. You've got several suppressor options out there that are going to be friendly with the 45 that can handle the Bushmaster or the 4570, thread right on, buck that recoil way, way down, make it a better shooting experience for everybody. And then, like you guys talked about with the Legend, I could throw in the Sub X. I can throw in some yeah. Superson or some Subsonic hunting ammo. And for those sub 100 yard food plots, or you're sitting in a tree stand or a box blind overlooking, you know, a, a little staging area uh, in the middle of some head of heavy timber, or maybe you're hunting a transition route out of the bedding and I can only see a hundred yards. That's going to be perfect. Well, and you can get that in a, you know, Ruger American or the Mossberg Patriot or the light, lightweight composite stock. They don't weigh anything. Mm-hmm. So you don't have but a six, seven pound rifle to go with you. Yep. So I that think makes it nice too. It does. And yeah, and to, to piggyback on that, I think, you know, the Ruger American is a great example. Get the Ruger American. It's got a short barrel. I know it's going to be bulletproof as far as the stock. The accuracy has always been good on those things. And I like the short barrel and the stopping power of a 450 Bushmaster. If I want to go to Alaska on a hunt, that'd be a great camp gun to, to bring along. Short barrel, 
you know, you've got a 45 caliber bullet at north of 2,000 feet per second. So should you need it for bear defense or something like that, it's quick handling and it's going to handle the environment, you know, yeah. something like Alaska where you're traditionally really wet up there. Um, yeah. Be another option uh, or another reason to have something like that in the stable. So that's what I would choose. But um, before we, we close this thing out, though, there are a bunch of other cartridges out there and more forthcoming as it seems, um, you know, that are, that are getting more popular. We talked about the 350 legend that one came on. And at the time I kind of gave it a stretch and a yawn and okay, 350 legend. Well, I, again, living in the echo chamber that I do, I forget that half of this country needed that cartridge, the low recoil, the flat trajectory, the easy shooting, the factory available rifles, good quality factory ammo, purpose built for what we're doing, shooting, you know, primarily whitetail deer at traditional ranges that just worked. And now you're seeing the 360 buck hammer from, from uh, Remington. You're seeing the 400 legend. Uh, there's a lot of really awesome new options. And then again, plenty of old options that we're only seeing getting more popular, like the 4570. Yeah. 405 Winchester, uh, uh, 44 mag, 357 mag. There's just, it's just, it's just a cool time to be a straight wall cartridge guy uh and again a lot of those states don't even have straight wall regulations but we're seeing the popularity climb in places like minnesota wisconsin and in greater parts of the south well in 350 legend it, it's become kind of a youth gun too i know i know a lot of guys were buying ars because you can collapse the stock oh, bring it in for your pole. yeah mm -hmm. so well, that helps too awesome well guys i uh, appreciate you coming around the table and just discussing things that, you know, really I have very, very little knowledge on, but a uh, very important part of our shooting and hunting world um, in, you know, those states that have incredible deer number, numbers and really high deer quality uh, and cartridges that are the favorites uh, are quickly becoming the favorites in those areas. And that's not to say that we don't make awesome shotgun slug ammo, because we certainly do. Ryan, you've developed in the last couple of years some really stellar 21st century hunting bullets for the muzzle loader so there's still great use there but from a straight wall standpoint um just a lot of versatility for the hunter so thanks you guys for for coming on and is there anything else you want to leave the listener with in regard to hunting with straight wall cartridges um <clears throat> i would say like we just talked about i think this new modern straight wall game is still pretty young just based on all these states just coming into these rigs in the past decade so I think there's a lot more to come on new cartridges and bullet designs for this, for that type of platform. I still think it's, and it's, I wouldn't say infancy, but I it's, think there's yeah. still a lot more to be developed yeah. there. A lot of growing to do for sure. Well, at this point you don't have an excuse not to like go buy a Ruger American, go buy a Mossberg, go buy something cheap in a straight wall and get out there and hunt. I mean. Yeah. Get out there and use it. Yeah. Yeah. You, like you mentioned, you can get these affordable rifles that, we've been blown away with the performance of like, you know, we talked about the Ruger American, the Patriots, another one, there's some CVA options out there. There's several options out there where you can get into a really economical rifle and you will be surprised at just how tight you can shoot some groups on paper. The performance of these uh, rifles, they've really figured out, you know, I don't know if it's the bedding or the barrel material or how they're doing the machining, but it just simply works. And like you said, there's no excuse. The laws are there. And, uh, the, the ammo's there, the bullet technology, a lot of it designed purposefully for what you're doing. So no excuse. Awesome, guys. I don't have anything else. So again, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this look into straight wall cartridges and some of the states where these cartridges are really becoming the go-to standard for whitetail hunting. We hope you enjoyed it. Catch you on the next one.